everyone and thank you for joining us for this question and answer session. My name is Amy Smith and I'm the Marketing Manager here at East Coast College. Today we are going to be providing you with a general overview of the advice that universities are currently offering students who will be starting in September. We will also be highlighting any key dates and decisions that you need to be aware of if you are going to university this year. During this session, we are going to be hearing from our careers advisor, Marie Borrego, Laura Davies, a NECO Higher Education Champion, and Eve Harrison, our Student Achievement Mentor and UCAS Lead. So let me first hand over to Eve Harrison. Hello everyone, so I'm Eve Harrison and I'm the Student Achievement Mentor at, and, you, and UCAS Lead at Lowest Loft Sixth Form College. So the purpose of this session is to just give you as much support as we possibly can in making those final decisions um, on your UCAS track. So we want to be able to make you aware of key dates and decisions that hopefully you are already aware of but um, you know that you need to make before attending university this September. Uh, we need to uh, provide you with a bit of a general overview, we think, of, of advice that universities are currently providing to students who will be joining them in, in 2020. And we have been calling um, universities as, as well and, and finding out what, what it's going to look like in September. And then we just want to be able to, as I say, support you as much as possible in making those decisions. It's always a difficult decision to make, but particularly in light of COVID-19 and everything that's going on at the moment, it is just going to, you know, we just want to be able to make that, that as, as easy as possible for you. All right. So then the, the, the key dates and decisions that you need to make between now and September. So back in um, April, UCAS extended the date by when students need to make their university choices. Uh, they did this to give you more time knowing that this would be a difficult decision and it gave the universities more time to reply to those offers as well. Um, so now you need to um, have um, replied to your, your universities of choice by Thursday the 18th of June at 6pm. So that needs to be done. You go onto your UCAS track, you click reply to offers, and then you make a conditional firm. Your conditional firm choice is the choice that you've been working towards since you got that offer. So you, you went to the open day or you, you saw that university or the course and you thought that's the one that I want to go to and that's what you've been working towards. So that's your firm, that's your first choice university. Then you've got the conditional insurance. Uh, this is the, the, the offer that equally you will still be happy to go to, but it may well be that, you know, if something doesn't go quite right on results day, this is your insurance choice. Um, you know, but do make sure that you're happy with that choice as well, all right? So as I say, go onto your track, click reply to offers, and then just make, make that choice, you know, as, as soon as you can. So now I'm going to hand you over to Marie. She's been doing lots of um, research recently into what university is going to look like in September. So I'm going to hand you over to Marie to do that now. All right. Okay. Hi, guys. I'm Marie Borrego and I'm the careers advisor and also a SAM at Lowestoft Sixth Form College. So 2020 academic year, what will it look like? So conversations that we've been having with universities across the UK at the moment, everyone is saying that they will be open for business and delivering to students in as normal a way as importance. So the autumn term may begin a week or two later. It may actually begin on the date that the university autumn term is due to begin and your university of choice will let you know that via email. They're continuously contacting you guys. Lectures may be smaller because universities are taking into account social distancing rules, but lectures will not go away. Some um, university le lectures may be online. Unis are looking very much about delivering a blended academic timetable and again they will tell you what this will look like wherever possible they're trying to keep it as normal as possible tutorials and small group sessions will take place and again if at all possible they will be face to face that is what the unis want for you if you are on a practical course a stem course that includes laboratory work creative um, courses 
the universities are working really hard so that wherever possible that is face-to-face -face delivery. Some events such as Freshers Week will include virtual sessions so you just need to make sure that you understand what you are being emailed by your unis and all universities are contacting you but that doesn't stop you contacting them because they're happy to talk to you individually to make sure you understand what is happening. Okay guys, so I'm going to hand over to Laura Davis. Hi everyone, I'm Laura Davies and I am a higher education champion at Lowest Off Sixth Form. I work with Nico, you might have seen our branding across the place. Um, so there's a couple of key tasks that you need to complete if you're going to September or into university in September. These are student finance, you need to make sure that that's completed and if you get stuck please feel free to talk to your SAM. And also choosing your accommodation, so this will be for your firm choice. Just check your emails, your university will have emailed you lots of instructions and again if you get stuck please talk to your SAM. Brilliant, thank you. Right, we're now going to move on to the um, question and answer part of our session. Um, we previously asked via our social media channels for you to submit some questions, so we've had a few of these through, so we'll work our way through those. So, the first question we received was, I wish to defer and go to university in 2021, what do I need to do? Laura, could I ask you to answer that please? Yeah. So if you wish to defer your university place until 2021, my first piece of advice would be to make sure that you have thought it through and thought about the pros and cons of doing so. Um, as soon as you're sure, make sure that you've chosen your university on track and then you'll need to contact the admissions team at that university. They will then talk you through on the phone how to go about it and they will also talk through your decisions for doing so as well to make sure that you've done it for the right reasons. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, our next question, when do I need to make my decision by? Eve, could you help with that one? Yep, so this decision needs to be done by 6pm on Thursday the 18th of June. So just make sure that you've gone onto your track and you've clicked that reply to offers by then, all right? Thank you. Uh, next question, is my decision final at this point? Marie? Okay, thank you. So this is a yes and a no answer. If you wish to defer and you've already made your decision, then you can still defer. So that's yes, you can change that. However, if you wish to change your course and you've already made your final decision, that becomes a lot trickier. So I would advise any student wishing to do this to talk initially to their SAM to make sure that this is exactly the decision you want to make at this late stage um, to make sure that is the best decision for you. Okay, thank you. Lovely, thank you. Uh, next question. I've been struggling working from home and therefore I fear my grades won't reflect what I want to achieve. What should I do? Norma? Um, so first of all, you have to remember that the situation we've been in for the past three months is very unique and very weird. Um, your teachers have made sure that they take into account all the hard work that you've done for the past two years. So your grades should reflect what you deserve. However, if you are concerned that they don't reflect what you deserve, you can talk directly again to the university admissions teams and they'll be sure to take into consideration any situations that you might have had at home or otherwise. Thank you. Next question. I have an unconditional offer but I don't think I'll pass the course due to mental health issues. Is the offer still okay or can it be taken away from me? Eve, do you think you can help with this one? Yeah, so again, as, as Laura said, you know, you need to speak to university admissions, but you also need to remember that, that it is a very unique time at the moment. And, um, you know, if you've been struggling on that, those, those predicted grades that you're getting will be based on the hard work that you've put in over the last two years. It's not just based on, on 
what's happened in the last few months and if your mental health has been affected by that that will be taken into account by your teachers okay um and then just also remember that that offer that you've been given is an unconditional one and they've taken the university has taken into account lots of other things as well as your grades you know they've taken into your personal statement and that application that you made and it must have been a really strong one for them to give you that unconditional offer so just remember that and and be proud of that all right thank you and our, our final question my insurance choice has asked me to pick my university accommodation and pay a deposit. What should I do? Marie, could I ask you to help with this one? Yeah, thank you. So if this is your insurance um, place asking you to choose your accommodation and pay a deposit, no, you don't do that because you only need to do this for your conditional firm or unconditional offer. So my answer is very clear, really. No, if it's an insurance offer, don't do this. Okay, thank you. Back to Amy. Brilliant, thank you. Well, that brings us um, to the end of our session today. Um, we hope we've answered some of your questions. If you've still got questions and, and you need further help, then please feel free to contact us via the email that's on the screen. That's here to help at eastcoast.ac.uk. And a member of our team will get back in touch with you and, and help you with any queries you've got. Um, and you can always contact your Sam as well and they'll be able to help you. Thanks again for joining us.